It's Sunday, September 28th, and right now we are standing in the brand new two-story pit lane. Yes, and from now on, this double pit lane is going to be with us for the next season. Right now we're in Donington Park, and they're holding the biggest, most historical event in motocross of the entire year. 32 nations have chosen their three best riders to enter this historical event with the goal of taking up the Chamberlain Trophy. Your defending champions are here, Team USA. They've won this event a record of 18 times. This year, the team consists of James Stewart, Ryan Villapoto, and Tim Ferry. But other countries are gonna participate. Italy, Australia, New Zealand, France. Who is gonna take home the Chamberlain Trophy? Ladies and gentlemen, your 2008 Red Bull Motocross of Nations. Start line with Ryan Villapoto on the Monster Kawasaki into a 180 degree left hand bend. And now winding out of that past the pit boxes through a small step down jump. Swinging him right handed, a couple of burns here, just get it nice and tight across a beautiful weight section, just going across those underneath the first of the Red Bull bridges, through down a step down jump, let it drift down towards the left hand side of the track, straighten up on the gas around the top of the bird, pick up speed, straight line it into the next right hand, a progressive corner, move out across to the left hand side of the track, down through one step down jump, through the other step down, over we go, tabletop, right down through to the bottom, swing into the left hand side, on with the gas, over through, double, and then through a triple as well, coming out of that one, keeping it nice and smooth, swing into a right hander, and then immediately left handed, trying to keep it nice and tight to the corners, and then again, off we go, progressive into a right handed corner, build up the gas, come into another step down jump, go across a double, Nicely through that one, nice and smooth, over another big jump, right towards the edge of the track, keeping it up on the high side, and then it drift out through that right-handed corner, into the left-hander, and again using every single inch of this uh, twisty gone into park track. Coming down through, right-handed again, punching out the gas, down over the uh, jump, and then straight into another left-handed corner, big handful of gas. Wind it up into the right hander. Drift out. Straight line into the next corner. Left handed. Punch out the gas. Let it drift out. Just get a little bit out of shape. Nice tight technical sections here. Around through the left hander. Starting to come up to the bigger. Down through one step down. Underneath the red ball banner. Through the big tabletop. Drift down to the other side and then right out to the corner of the track, starting to wind up towards the end of the lap, through a wave section, and then in, big burn, which you'll start to use on the outside when the racing starts, over the jump, down the other side of the step down, left-handed, and almost in towards the end of the lap with Ryan Villapoto. Two times uh, winner in the Red Bull Motocross of Nation, what do you think about the track? Uh, the track looks awesome. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's some uh, a lot of big jumps, and uh, I think that's what suits our style. And and uh, you know we need some uh, three good starts, and we should be good. And uh, are you ready for another win? Uh, hopefully, you know I think uh, it's a team event, and uh, you know the track looks pretty good. I've seen it, and uh, I'm excited about it. I just wanted to come over here and check how it was, and uh, I'm about to go out in a few minutes, so hopefully it'll be good. Okay. Dave Nichols, FIM race director. Dave, tell us about uh, the track surface here in Donington Park. Right, the, the track surface here at Donington is, is a clay soil, which is difficult to work, and we, we have to process it in a certain way. Ustream have track staff that do that. What we do is we, first of all, put down some uh, small wood chips sawdust in and work that into the soil. This allows it to retain moisture. And what we do, once we've got the wood chips in, and we'll look at it now. You see down here, we bring small wood chips down and we put those on the surface and then we cultivate that into the ground. We'll look at the machine that we first rip deep and then after we've ripped it deep, then you water and get the water right inside the soil. 
and after that we have another machine, a power harrow from the agricultural world, and that stirs and mixes the soil up and get a good texture that holds the water, holds the moisture much longer. So this is the machine that we rip first to get, to get the soil moved deep and you can see how deep it rips right into the ground that deep and lifts the soil ready for the wood chips and water to mix in deeply. champion team USA. I'm going to pass the mic over to James Stewart. What's going on guys? It's James Bubba Stewart, MX team captain. I'm going to introduce my teammates in MX2 class, Ryan Villapodium. Villapodo. Pretty good. You? I'm doing great. In MX3 class, we got Tim Dirty Dog, Tim Ferry. <laughs> How's it going guys? I'm doing great. I want to win! This is my team and uh, here we're at Donington Park. We're gonna have some good time. Hey, I'm with your home team, Great Britain. I'm gonna hand the mic to Billy McKenzie and he's going to introduce all these men in red. All right guys, uh, this is our team for the weekend. I'm Billy McKenzie. We've been hanging out all week. It's been real good. Tommy So and um. I'm the MX2 rider of the team, and I'm going, um, going for it this week. Hopefully we can get ourselves on the podium. Hi, I'm Sean Simpson. I'm riding the MX2 bike in the open class MX3. So, yeah, I just hope to get a good start, decent start, and get out there with the, with the guys and, yeah, bring home a good result for the home crowd. I'm with Team Australia. They traveled a really far way to get here, and I'm going to hand the mic over to your team captain, Chad Reed. Chad? Hey there, I'm Chad Reed. I'll be riding MX1. Uh, really looking forward to it. It's been a while since I raced. Here we got Brett Metcalf. We're going to do good. I think we're going to have a good, good day Sunday. Over here we got MX3, Michael Byrne. Ready for the podium, Burner? Yeah, ready as I'm going to be. All right, that's Team Australia. Hopefully you'll see you guys on the podium. All right, Team New Zealand. They're here, they traveled far, and your team captain this weekend is none other than Josh Coffin. Well, uh, yeah, I'm here to introduce my team, or the team, and uh, I've just found out that I was the uh, team captain. So I'm going to... I didn't know. No, it's a first to me, but uh, we're one rider short, but I'll let Cody tell you about that, and uh, I'll introduce you to Cody. Yeah, Scotty's a bit late, Scott Collum. He uh, races over here doing GPs and uh, lives with Josh Coppin. And, uh, yeah, and he, he's got a good bike this weekend, so... With a good result for the, the whole team. There they are, Team New Zealand. for the MX1 class. This week you know where the guys are going to sit in that class on the grid for qualifying. And immediately it is uh, Stewart out in front, James Stewart, the American sensation, and uh, sticking him right behind him. The guys are just finding it so, so tight out there. Billy McKenzie trying to work his way through, along with Ken Dijka and the number four machine of Sebastian Porcel, all finding it really tough out here to try and keep with the flying American. Mackenzie and the Dyker really tried to chase Stewart down in this race. The Porcel on the 2009 Kawasaki was starting to fight his way through the field. The uh, stars of the World Championship were finding the AMA hot ship 
out the front, very, very difficult to handle as uh, the number 10 machine of David Philippart decided to take half the track around with him, which took him right the way down to uh, fourth position for the Italian team in the qualifying. And uh, Borsell and Mackenzie really were starting to lock horns together. It was just like a round of the World Championship. But the only thing was that we had an American right out the front of this, banging bars, exchanging paintwork. It was right the way down to the wire between the Dyker and Porcel. But Stuart showed us a masterclass despite coming off in this race, took the chequered flag and finished a good few seconds in front of everybody else and put his marker down for the MX1 races to come when we came round to the Sunday and the full round of the Motocross of Nations here at Donington Park. Second class blasted away from the line and it was the MX2 guys and we were looking to uh, Ryan Villapoto, the uh, other team member from the United States to show what he had in his arsenal down there because he did not want to be outshot by teammate Stewart and immediately away from the start Villapoto on the number two machine uh, 250 Kawasaki decided that he was going to go absolutely flat out. The surprise package, the number 44 of uh, Matthias Carew on the Suzuki. The 16 year old showing everybody that he could run with the front runners and he's going to be a threat in the world championship next year. The South Africans were having trouble. Rat rate was all over the place. Not the sort of form the world champion should be showing but it was the Americans yet again with Villapoto coming over the line to take that checkered flag showing some real style and a major, major threat in the MX2 class. The free-for-all for the open class, you could choose anything from the 250 to the 450 bike. Uh, it was your choice out there. Uh, again, we were looking for probably the weakest link in the American chain being the number three of Tim Ferry. And everybody was going absolutely flat out right from the start. There's a number 12 of Alex Salvini for the Italian team. Really finding some good form as we came in through the... Uh, better part of the year coming down towards the end of the world championship season but it was the Australians and the New Zealanders that were starting to show at the front of the field as Salvini just found it a little bit too hot getting towards the latter stage of the races the number 60 going across there one of the Australian team members of Michael Byrne started to work his way up through the field racing in the AMA series of this year and he was starting to look good for the Australian dark horses as the uh, number 30 machine also going through there but Salvini holding his own but meanwhile out the front is the 115 of Cody Cooper for the uh, New Zealand team that was really starting to wind the pace up here and was making this race all his own Team USA were not going to have the same success in the this race the open race as they had in MX1 and MX2 so Cooper coming across the line and leading the rest of the pack round with the 84 of Zach Osborne and Michael Byrne for Australia coming round. So, so the dark horses starting to show wild cards to the top of the pack. France, uh, winner in 2001 and second in 2007. And here is the team leader, Sebastian Purcell. Hello, everybody. I'm going to introduce you my team. I'm really happy to be here uh, with the French uh, equipe. Yeah, the rider in MX2. Nicolas Aubin, rider in uh, open class. Yeah, hello, I'm Nicolas. I'm, I'm happy to be here with the team and uh, we have a big goal for this week. We want to win. See you Sunday night. We have a, a good team uh, this year. We had the same team like last year. We were on the podium, so uh, I hope uh, we go for the win tomorrow. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult, but we will uh, for sure try to be on the podium. I'm uh, really happy uh, with my second year uh, selected for the MX of Nations. And um, yeah, I'm going to give everything uh, tomorrow and uh, hope we can get a podium. So
second year also for me and uh, now in MX1 uh, I think uh, difficult uh, with all the fastest guys in there but uh, for sure I'm big enough uh, to pull out uh, a good race and uh, I'm not gonna step aside of anybody. Let's get them. We are in Casa Azzurra with the Italian team. Hi everybody, I'm going to introduce you to the team of this year in MX2, Manuel Money, and in MX3, Alex Salvini. Hi everybody, it's always a great pleasure to race in the Motocross of Nations and we're the Schund of Italy. For sure we will do our best and we hope to do a great race. We are a very tight team, plus we have the world champion in the team. And for sure, it's a good motivation for all of us to do a good race. This year, we want to be on the podium and we will make the best effort. Team South Africa in 2004 was the best result in fifth position. And today, with the new MX2 world champion, Tyler Atrey, we're going to see what's going to happen. This is Cam Fitzgerald, he's racing the Open class for Team South Africa and next to him we've got Neville Bradshaw, he's racing the MX1 class for Team South Africa. Um, I'm excited to be here, it's, a, it's an honour to race uh, for my country and alongside Tyler and Neville for, for the Days Nations and hope we can, can put some good results together. It's my third time doing the race so you know, really looking forward to it, I've ridden this track quite a bit and uh, it's a real good track so looking forward to getting some good racing in. Let's get out there and hang it out. Fantastic view of the historic circuit of Donington Park here in the East Midlands with the equally historic Motocross of Nations for 2008 here at Donington. The fans packing in in their tens of thousands to watch this magical race at this fantastic venue. I'm with Giuseppe Luongo, Ustream president, and uh, this, uh, the Red Bull FM Motocross of Nation, is one of the most exciting events of the season. Giuseppe, are you satisfied? Yeah, I'm very satisfied. The Motocross of Nation is the greatest uh, race in all the world, you know, of the year. So it's a great show. You listen to the public, how it's hot. We have, I don't know, 60, 70,000 on the weekend, and the race is fantastic. Uh, USA leading, I think, France second, the Great Britain third. It's uh, unbelievable, the show. This is, uh, you know, how motocross have to be. It's the biggest show in the world. And uh, Giuseppe, what can you tell us about uh, the new venue about the next year? Yeah, next year we have a lot of improvement. We go very much out of Europe. Uh, we will go to Brazil. We will go to USA. The motocross of nation finally will be in Italy in the uh, circuit of Francia Corta. And I believe also we will go in Turkey to Istanbul. The motocross will improve every year and will come bigger and bigger. It's, uh, I think it will be a very exciting. It will be great. Mr. Jreb, the world motocross president. So this is a great improvement for motocross. That's the most important race of the year, it's wonderful and we have to say thanks to Donington Park for a wonderful venue, thanks to the 10,000 of fans coming here, the British fans are crazy, they blow their horns, it's a wonderful day, it's a big success for motocross.
coming into the first race of this three race program this has got the potential to be an absolute powder keg it will go up with a huge great bang the usa with stuart villapoto the australians with reed and metcalf france on the line with porcel leading the way it is going to be a superb race there are huge amounts of talent in this race uh, with two world champions and the ama champion in there as well and right away from the start on the line Villapoto got squeezed almost into his own pit box down there and was absolutely nowhere he was left literally dangling around into the weeds but right out the front the current uh, newly crowned world champion of David Philippart's grabbed hold of the lead and he was going to show everybody exactly which way this circuit was going to run around here at Donington Park. Absolutely full of confidence. The Italian was starting the streak away on the first lap, leaving everybody in his wake on the uh, Monster Racing Yamaha and really was showing the form that has made him the World Championship. The rest of the uh, riders, including James Stewart, were floundering back there so we looked down through the pack to see where Stuart was and he was just starting to move his way into third position the uh, 24 races out of 24 American has not been beat this year at all even in the qualifying races came up to the top of the pile so the game was really on with the favorites the USA up against it already with Villapoto languishing right down towards the bottom end the uh, number 16 machine the uh, Spaniard Jonathan Barragan also up there as well was doing a fantastic job as we know he can do when he really has got the hammer down on the KTM but Philip Arts was starting to take command of this race despite the fact we were only a couple of minutes into it it was looking very very good for the Italian team they'd come in without they're one of their favorite riders uh, the uh, Italian sensation in MX2 so it was up to Philip Arts basically to hang on to the lead and put the Italians in a very very good position and everybody was got their eyes behind on the battle that was going on with Stewart and Barragan down there how long was it going to take Philip Arts takes a quick look over his shoulder to find if there is anybody there and at the moment there is absolutely nobody at home but Stewart now on the move with the AMA Kawasaki this is the machine that took him to all those victories and he was starting the move in catching up with the back end of the Yamaha so we were going to have an absolutely superb battle Barragan still hanging on there in third position was still looking good for a good position and some good points remember it's the least number of points that count in this race so one point and through the uh, the big jump sections which these Americans really really like those are the guys that uh, take it right the way down to the wire uh, but Philip Hart started the fight back he was not going to surrender the lead so easily to the young American upstart and uh, he was going to go absolutely flat out and hard as we know Philip Hart can really ride hard when he is absolutely pressed Stuart Biden his time down there as the rest of the field were really struggling to keep up with these pair who were absolutely pulling out but again through the big wave section Philip Hart just glanced across there and got a full face view of the American riding across in front of him and really now had to start to fight back the battle was well and truly on there as the race leader came past and was starting to stretch the advantage remember in the qualifying race he put out a gap of somewhere in the region of six seconds lost that and then fought all the way back Sebastian Porcel on the uh, 2009 Kawasaki was starting to make a charge now Porcel who had a poor opening lap was coming back from a fall and was determined that he was going to get in and amongst the points for France who had come in here as a bit of a favorite uh, but not really expected to do well down in the MX2 class but Porcel was really starting to rock it very reminiscent of the form that he showed with the double GP win in France but back down the field the number two of Ryan Villapoto was charging the red mist had come down he was in 18th position and was starting to move his way through the field he needed to come up to the top of the pile he was absolutely furious that Stewart was running away with this race and really wanted to be with his compatriot Jonathan Barragan was having a real solid fourth position bringing the unfavored Spanish team into a good good 
opening slot, certainly with this MX1 and MX2 class. And 12th position, Fancy Bossier holding his own against some very, very good opposition. The uh, MX2 rider starting to come good towards the end of the World Championship season, was now doing his level best to make sure that France were in with the shout when they were coming down to the third race. Porcel was really starting to put the pressure on at the front, but uh, we were all still looking at the number two of Villapoto as he started to come through. They're just overtaking the Italian of Manuel Moni. He was really coming on strong towards the end of the race, coming up to 13th position and absolutely charging. The uh, young American was not going to be happy at the end of this race uh, because he really wanted to be another one of these riders that just got a single win and then came out for another win. So with minutes left in the race, Barragan still dropping down into third position, having a very, very good solid race. If only he could repeat this overall form in the World Championship. But Philip Hart started to come back at him, took second win. It was Philip Hart's time from about 10 minutes towards the end of this race. And the uh, Italian was now starting to charge, moved himself up into the third position, overtook Barragan and really was having a fantastic race. The Philipparts we know of old, the Philipparts that won the World Championship was back on form again and was going to be a danger. Tyler Rattray, on the other hand, was having an absolute nightmare. He came in absolutely ready for this race, but it all went horribly wrong. The Diker showing good in the qualification races, but wasn't as good, but came in in a rock solid eighth position and uh, was looking to do better when he came out for his next race. But it was all about this guy, the number one, James Stewart, the American sensation, the whole shot specialist, and the absolute epitome of a world championship rider, took the checker flag, one point for the American, that was exactly perfect, and they were looking already as if they were gonna take the trophy home with them, and was making it look so easy. Stewart, in first position, Porcel, Philip Arts for Italy, Barragan for Spain, Julian Villa cracking race for Switzerland, Billy McKenzie in sixth position with Josh Cobbins and Kenda Dyker in seventh and eighth position. Tommy Sell coming home in, four to, uh, in ninth position with Villa Poto coming up to tenth, a mammoth effort right at the end, just in front of Bossier of France. Yeah, no, they was running really good, you know. Uh it was tough, you know, we went back and forth right there a little bit and uh, just tried to ride smart. I was making a couple mistakes in the beginning and then uh, just kind of started getting in the groove and just trying to inch away a little bit, but those guys are fast and I know that. So Stewart coming home in first position for the Americans, but the two rider score counts and a total score of 11 points. France in second with 13, Great Britain with 15, Italy with 17, Spain with 19. These were the contenders, it seemed, after the first race. New Zealand some way down with 32 points, a bit of a disappointment. In Germany, Finland and South Africa not doing well with the uh, MX2 world champion Tyler Rattray really having a nightmare of a race. But it was all about the Americans and the charge for the trophy. Were they going to get it for the, the fourth time in four years on the trot? James, you are so strong and we want to know what is your physical preparation? Uh, just a lot of training, you know, I feel a lot stronger than I was here when I came here two years ago and uh, I was able to cover from two mistakes and uh, I don't want to have those mistakes so I don't have to do that but it was a good race, I felt pretty good, just got to make some changes and see what happens tomorrow. Tara Geiger from Puerto Rico, the only woman racing in the Red Bull FM Motocross of Nations. Yep, definitely. Last year was my first year at Budge Creek, and we're back again this year in England. Uh, hopefully do better than last year, just represent the women out there, represent my country, Puerto Rico. The 
second race saw the MX2 bikes out almost directly uh, with Villapoto being joined by the open class bike and ferry. The Australians with Metcalf and Byrne, Bossier again out with Albin coming in. Probably not the strongest lineup the French would look for uh, with Spain, Finland, Republic of South Africa, Tyler Ratray got to do better this time around and Canada and the Netherlands in there as well. And right away from the start you can see Metcalf, the Australian, leaning on the uh, American on the inside trying to block their run through into the first corner and it really was going to start to get very very hectic out there but uh, Villapoto is having absolutely none of it riding through a red mist after that first race where he was just left absolutely right at the back and fought his way through into 10th position that was Zach Osborne for the Puerto Ricans right at the back of the field probably the worst start he's ever had through his very short Grand Prix career and on the UTAC Yamaha really started to motor through the field at uh, this second race as the rain started to come in just light rain drifting in making the, the visibility just a little bit hazy but the riders plowed on through that and it was uh, the 115 of Cody Cooper who was the winner of the open qualification race who was chasing down the American was Cooper going to manage to get himself up the front and take command of this race remember this is an open class machine up against the 250 machine the last time we'd seen Villapoto on a 250 machine because he was going to move up to the big boys class and take the 450 Kawasaki in 2009. So Cooper and Villapoto absolutely neck and neck. The Kiwi trying to make up some ground with Josh Coppins not having the first uh, good race out there for the uh, Kiwis. But Villapoto was on a charge and he was really starting to turn the style on. Uh, with the 250 bike and uh, Cooper was gradually finding it was going to be harder and harder and harder to hang on to this flying American out the front it's as we had seen in the qualification races as soon as they got their nose out in front they took command of this Donington pack motocross and nations track and just ran away with everything so dominant was the Americans uh, in qualification you really had to wonder if anybody had an answer for it so with uh, 27 minutes gone of the race or 27 minutes sorry of the race still to go it was looking very good at the front as the lead was starting to stretch out with every lap that he completed even the wet conditions the beautiful wet conditions of the uh, Donington Park track were not putting it uh, all to rest for the American as Bossier was going on with their more problems for Rattray and the South Africans in the pit. This was just a race that Tyler will want to forget completely and utterly. But the French were starting to charge now with Bossier coming through and doing a fantastic race, really holding his own against some very high class opposition. And could this be a marker for this young uh, Frenchman for next year in the MX2 World Championship? We'll just have to wait and see and go through the winter months. But he was doing absolutely superbly backing up his uh, teammate Paul Sell from that race uh, second place in the first race. So starting the charge on through, the French were looking as though they were going to be somewhere near a podium position. Uh, we thought they were going to be certainly in the top 10, but uh, with Salvini behind for the Italians as well, Salvini having a fantastic ride. Uh, done the last round of the World Championship and really looked good in that and was starting to charge on the Italians. Team spirit definitely at the front of the pack. Steve Ramon riding the unfamiliar number nine was having to start to work his way through the field. He was really finding it tough at uh, this track. The uh, Belgian with high hopes to come in. And, uh, they were looking very, very good. Joel Smets was the team manager, was confident as uh, Ferry was fighting down the field and seemed to be stuck around about the middle of the pack, around about 10th, 11th, 12th place. And Tim Ferry, who the Americans have brought over, and they said, yeah, he's the insurance policy. Some people were beginning to doubt whether Tim had what it took to uh, make the team and uh, get uh, some good results out of this, but we're still plugging on. And the Italian man with money was also doing superbly well up in ninth position and trying to reinforce the position of the Italian team as well. Searl was starting to fly. Tommy Searl had a disappointing first race and he now just dug down deep into the British locker and got some courage and some spirit out of it and started to plough on. It got round to that sort of stage where the World Championship riders were really having to dig. The races were just a little bit shorter than they're used to, so uh, they really had to look at their boards and sort the timing out. And Tommy Sell 
uh, with his last race on European soil, was looking to plow through this pack and make sure that the British had really had a chance on home soil in front of all their fans to do well and be up onto the podium. So started the move up and really was flying, putting some fantastic laps in towards the end and got right up with the Australians as he came through on Bradshaw that was giving him a hard time and managed to take him right at the last knockings down there it was running through and uh, we were looking also at Ramon who also all of a sudden he woke up and was starting to push for the Belgians as well the pit signals were coming through the riders were starting to sit up and take notice because it was all on the line as Cooper faded towards the latter stages of the race after chasing Villapoto down in the early stages really started to drop down the order and lost some valuable points for the Kiwis, which really was going to start to put them out of contention as the Belgians turned the heat up, the British turned the heat up, the French were still in there. It was going to be a classic motocross of nations here at Donington Park as this second race really started to wind up down towards its latter stages. Cooper still running the long in second position but uh, faded badly off the lead and Ramon was starting to come alongside him, the pressure was starting to show and they still had three laps for this race to go so Ramon fighting his way through and uh, really giving Cooper a hard time as they got caught up with back markers and all sorts of other people out there with a thrilling finish to this MX2 and open race. But Villapoto had done exactly what he wanted to do. Go out, dominate, absolutely blow everybody into the weeds. And America were looking sitting pretty. Two wins from two races. Was there anything that was gonna stop the American juggernaut on its path towards the Chamberlain Trophy? We had to wait until race three to find out whether that was gonna happen or if anybody had anything left in the tank to challenge the Stars and Stripes. Captain America really happy down there in the crowd as Villapoto charged on his way to first position. Ramon in second, Searle a fantastic third, Cooper was fourth, Salvini fifth, Osborne from the back of the field up to sixth position followed it by Orbit and Byrne for the Australians. Tim Ferry a ninth position so that could be crucial in the count when five scores out of six were all added up. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, started off a little rocky that first moto, and, uh, you know, James won, so that was good for us, and I uh, finished okay, and now uh, regrouped, you know, with that short amount of time, and came back out, and got a, you know, a decent start, and, uh, you know, got the lead quick, and I just wanted to pull that gap and make sure, uh, you know, no mistakes happened, and I uh, finished up front. A little bit more relaxed from Villapoto, but still looking very concerned. USA on 21 points, Italy and Great Britain on 33, France on 38, Belgium on 39. These were the guys that were going to fight for the podium. Australia looking to be out of it, along with Spain and New Zealand. Switzerland still there in the top 10 position with a very good uh, chance from Finland to stay with the way. Canada, Germany, Republic of South Africa, and then Brazil, who had come by way of the B final, putting the good showing in. So Villapoto charges on for the Americans, looking very good as uh, they turned on the style here at the Motocross of Nations. I'm with uh, John Fox, the director designer of this beautiful line. So, John, how did you start this uh, long story? Yeah, uh, my father, Jeff Fox, um, started the brand Fox in 1974, and he was a motocross enthusiast um, when he was younger and very passionate about the sport. And we began to make um, the protective clothing apparel for the sport. Um, and have become one of the major companies in the sport of motocross and uh, it is in our blood. Um, my whole family continues to work uh, for the, the brand Fox and they are all involved in uh, creating the best looking and uh, best protecting gear in, in the world.
Danny Magu Chandler, in 82, winner of the Motocross of Nation and the trophy, and four motos in a row. What can you remember about that great day? It was one of the greatest days of my life. As uh, far as a professional dirt bike racer, it, uh, you know, I had accomplished something that I had wanted to do for a long time as a little boy. So it was, it was a great day. Welcome back to the Previdia for the final race. And I'm with uh, James Stewart. James, after 18 title, titles you won. So uh, this is the last race. Uh, what is about this final race? I just want to have a good time. You know, uh, track looks pretty good. It looks slippery. And I uh, just want to try to get another good start and uh, see what happens. You know, this guy's around good the first moto and uh, just got to do my thing. OK, thank you so much. And uh, here I am with the Italian team, David Filippart, uh, MX1 World uh, Champion this year. So, uh, David, the second position, 33 points, uh, together with Great Britain. Uh, how are you going to make it? No, I'm happy for uh, the other two riders. They go very, very good today, uh, unbelievable. And uh, I think so this race is, uh, is good, and I won't try to go to the podium, no? And I push every lap for go. Coming down to the wire, the last race of the 2008 Motocross of Nations. Uh, America in the pole position with Australia, France, Belgium, Italy, New Zealand, Great Britain and Estonia. Those are the positions they are on the grid. But the points that matter, the places, is the Americans, the French, the Italians, the British and the Belgians. They are all in with a shot of this title. And it's going to be absolutely on the button. Who is going to get through the turn? And past the pits first off, we're looking right at the front of the pack. And I'm pretty much sure that they look like Stewart, who has done it all over again. He's just literally outgunned everybody out of the blocks. And I think that was Paul Sell that was coming alongside him as well. So we've got the two Kawasaki's out in front, one and two. The Americans and the French absolutely all over each other. I think Coppins was making a move for about third position as well, bringing the Kiwis up into some form of contention, although they are just looking for about, I think, a top 10 on this one. The fight is going on at the front. And America looking good in the opening lap of this last race with the uh, open class and the MX1 bikes out there. This is going to be an absolute cracker, this race. It's going to go down to the wire. I'm absolutely sure it is because Paul Sell is riding his heart out for the French. Stewart does not want to give another race away. He really does not want to be defeated anywhere in the world. He went through the AMA series at home with 24 races and took all 24, a feat only repeated by Ricky Carmichael, that fantastic American racer. And now Paul Sell is absolutely hot on the tracks of Stewart, trying to get alongside him and uh, really giving the fight to the American. Drops up alongside him and just wants to get into the lead to prove that he can run with this uh, lad that's come over from the States and really has shown everybody around this uh, Donington Park Raceway. And we don't know whether it's still going to be here as Paul Sell gets very close to the outside and the track starts knocking the track markers off. That is how hard he is trying to keep up with Stuart and really comes down on the inside of him and starts to get very close. These two are going to be swapping green paintwork any second now and uh, it's going to be very, very tight. Paul Sell is not known to give away to anybody when he's in that mood and they almost clash there. Stuart being forced wide, the grandstand goes completely ballistic down there as the Frenchman takes the lead. Even the Union Jacks are flying out there because it's a case of the favourites. Everybody wants to see the favourites beaten one way or another. But Sebastian Porcel pushing on with the Kawasaki. Stewart now then into second position, fights back and draws up alongside Porcel, puts the gas on and draws away from it, takes a quick look over his shoulder. You can just see Coppins in the background there with his uh, familiar black and white colours there, the colours of 
New Zealand trying to keep pace with these two guys up front and they put another superb display the Stewart comes alongside Purcell flashes a glance across to him the American takes the lead the Frenchman fights back again and we've still got over 26 minutes of this race to run this is going to be superb it's just what the motocross of nations is about one country fighting another one but it's going to be down in the uh, in the trenches back down in the 10th 11th 12th and 13th position where the second man is going to come across the line these guys are going to score the low points up the front the way it's going at the moment but it's going to be down with these guys Philip Hartz, the Italian sink ship is absolutely sinking down here 26 position after that fantastic first race of his what on earth has gone wrong with Philip Hartz? he must have had an off or got caught up in a load of traffic oh Michael Byrne for the Australians that one's going down the pan as well not having a great time the Australians with, with Chad Reed on board were possibly going to be some jokers in the pack here but that's all gone awry as we're well into half race distance uh, Max Nagel on the KTM pushing on his solo effort for Germany trying to push them up to a decent position that's the number seven of De Dijka with McKenzie all over the back of him the uh, possibly lucky 13 for Billy McKenzie as he is carrying the British flag along there with the Simpson some way down the field but uh, Tim Ferry just cruising around at the moment in 11th position oh Mark De Ruyver in the pits not a good time for the uh, Dutchman and he will be out just to cruise around at the end Nicholas Olban trying to make a charge on the back of Sean Simpson in front of him so this is all going to be about the second and third positions on the podiums the Americans look as though they've got this done and dusted with Stewart some way out into the lead as over the line goes the Australian with uh, Salvini for the Italians oh Stewart's come off and the Kawasaki it will not get started it just will not happen there for the Kawasaki and the first place is dropping down so Porcel takes over this is going to guarantee the French the po second podium positions the Americans are pretty sure to win on this one but the French are going to come home with this race win in second place now fingers crossed is between the Belgians and the British oh Mackenzie's off as well and the bike won't start again and he despair on the handlebars as Porcel comes up to the last part of the racetrack and comes by the Red Bull hospitality and takes the win. That is the French, I am sure, in second position. And the Americans must be sweating on where Stewart and Ferry are going to finish on this one. Stewart comes across the line. He's way down in about 22nd, 23rd place. But there was a monumental effort by Ferry to come up to fifth position in the closing laps. Porcel, Lyot, Nagal, De Dijka, Ferry, Coppins, Bill and Reed, the top eight. And where were the places that count? Barragan, Alban for the French, Mackenzie, Salvini, Simpson, Ramon. This is going to be so, so close right at the end of this. We just don't know who is along the podium. We know the Americans, we know the French are on there. Who is going to fill the last position up? The United States win by five points from France. Belgium just creep in front of Great Britain on home turf by one point. Italy in fifth position. Australia, Spain, New Zealand, the top eight with Switzerland and Germany rounding out the top ten, just edging out Finland. What a, what a race. Americans on the podium yet again. This is the fourth time in four years. They're victorious. Tim Ferry, James Stewart, Ryan Villapoto flying the stars and stripes. And uh, that Chamberlain Trophy has only been over here for a couple of days and it's going to go all the way back to the States yet again. Well, it's been a superb 2008 Motocross of Nations as the champagne is going to start to fly and everybody has been a winner here this weekend at Donington Park. Yeah, you know, um, it was cool because I was just telling these guys it was a team effort. One moto each, you know, we got it done. And uh, when I was down, I couldn't start my bike. I was waving Timmy on like, dude, you got to bail me out on this one. So uh, I I'm stoked. You know, you got to be happy. This was what it's all about. And uh, it's a good ride. Ryan Villopoto winning the MX2 class and one MX one moto as well. Fantastic day for you. Yeah, it was good. You know, it kind of started off rocky for me, that first moto. And, uh, you know, turned it around in, that, uh, in the second moto. And... Um, you know, like James said, it was, it was a it was a real team uh, effort. You know, last year it seemed uh, pretty flawless and easy for us, and you know, this year we uh, we had uh, you know they were they were gunning for us for sure. 
team like last year, your effort was fantastic and was incredibly good for the team. Thank you. Yeah, like, like James said, it's, uh, it was a team effort today. And, uh, you know, I had a rough first moto, had some, uh, had some problems. And uh, I salvaged that second moto, I got a fifth. Uh, this one was a lot tougher than last year, but I knew it was going to be coming in. concludes the 2008 Red Bull Motocross of Nations. And Team America won again. See you next year. 2009, see you next year in Francia Corta in Italy, 4th of October, be there.